Number 10, spy tools. Back in August 2016, a group named the Shadow Brokers were the talk of the town. How could you not be with a name like that? That name makes them sound like a comic book villain. The Shadow Brokers? What? But check this out. The Shadow Brokers would basically steal cyber weapons from an NSA hacking unit and then proceed to sell them online to the highest bidder. The Shadow Brokers. I can't lie, it's a pretty sick name. The intentions, however, not so rad, not so radical. These tools have been used by many countries and many schemes. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, you name it. These cyber attacks are also no joke. Once the entire city of Baltimore was under quite the cyber attack, I swear to God, the entire city, the 2019 ransomware cyber attack all connected to said shadow brokers. Yeah, whoever this mysterious group is still remains a mystery. Is it you? If so, click thumbs up on this video. Number nine, hide your bread. Putting your money in your mattress sounds a lot easier than this system, that's for sure. Way less complicated too. Back in 2016, journalists all over the world were looking into what's called the Panama Papers, a plethora of leaked documents. Now these all came from a law firm, Mozak Fonseca. The operation here was that the firm would help the super rich hide their money in these offshore tax havens. And before you ask, yes, they got caught and this whole thing was of course shut down. In total, there were 140 politicians from 50 countries who were all busted, including the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and Iceland's former Prime Minister Singunder David Gunlawson. Yeah, y'all guilty. And we found out. Just, just be rich. Just be rich and do the things you have to do when you're rich. Don't hide your money. Number eight, SIM cards. In February 2015, it was reported that Snowden, our good boy Edward Snowden, he provided documents that showed that the NSA and the GCHQ had all hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year to big names. Names like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, you're probably paying for some of these, you name it, right? While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both the voice and data transmissions of every user, i.e. us. The company had actually been the target of at least two sophisticated intrusions, and they believed that the NSA and <laughs> juicy headquarters, GCHQ, were all responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to all these encryption keys. Yeah, no, just, just the dirty text, nothing else. We're good though. Let's just hope that's the case. I mean, honestly, I'm deleting my history anyways, just to be safe. Number seven, military dolphins. Yeah, I said military dolphins. We're gonna get weird now, I guess. Iran has plenty of nuclear capabilities, but they also have trained dolphins now too, so good game. Back in 2000, Iran bought this fleet of trained dolphins from Russia, just, you know, Russians doing Russian things, but they were trained supposedly by the Soviet Union to attack ships, and yes, even people. We have Navy SEALs and military dolphins. This is it, behind the scenes for Aquaman 2, I guess. What's going on here? Well, recently, like 2018 recent, satellite photos revealed a Russian naval base in Syria with pens that are commonly used for holding, you guessed it, dolphins. Yep, the dolphins are back. Ooh. Russia and the US both have fleets of trained dolphins to detect mines, but now Iran's in the mix as well. Is the next world war gonna be dolphins? That would be loud. Number six, secret iPods. Nowadays, it feels like there's a new iPhone or a new iGadget every other day. Technology is evolving a little too fast, I'd say. VR? Not for me, I'm not ready. My body was not ready for that. Music is also personal. Spotify, way too personal. But have you heard of Apple's top secret iPod? Would you get one of these? I'd pre-order it, let's do it. Back in 2005, former Apple software engineer David Shayer revealed that the tech giant once partnered up with the US Department of Energy. This special iPod was designed to test radiation on the go without drawing any attention from the public. Yeah, imagine this thing in an Apple commercial, just dancing silhouettes, having a good time, and then just one guy suspiciously in the background like listening to music. This was of course top secret information back in the day, but Apple secretly helping the government by putting a Giger counter in an iPod for a spy, that's eh, next level, that's shady. We're gonna talk about that on this list for sure. Number five, catfish. I mentioned bird drones in part two, so obviously I gotta mention robot android catfish. Yep, you didn't believe them, they've arrived. What are we gonna do now, folks? The general public found out about this hidden spectacle in 2020. Catfish robots, specifically one named Charlie. Yes, it has a name. It isn't like the rest of the fish in school, okay? This one's actually an undercover agent working for the CIA, so. 
he's a different fish. This all initially happened back in the 90s when the CIA was trying to collect water samples, obviously in secret, so they would send Charlie Chaplips upstream by using wireless communications. That was their high tech, that was their James Bond plan, believe it or not. And yes, this was high tech stuff at the time, all hidden inside the 60 centimeter long catfish. Sometimes spy tech is cool, you know, like a secret iPod, that's, that's neat, we like that. This was not one of them. I don't think Charlie will make an appearance in the next Mission Impossible movie. You know what I mean? I don't think Tom Cruise is going to send up a robotic fish. Number four, caller ID. Back to our boy Snowden for this one, of course. He's so good. How can we not talk about him? The king of leaks, besides Sony, obviously. In 2013, it was revealed by The Guardian that, according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. Yeah, this was done through what's called a business records proposition of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of one George W. Bush. So, this allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. Yeah, all those breakups, all those prank calls, give them. Give them here. This information included things like the time, location, and the duration of your calls. The information also began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Now, of course, once these documents were leaked to the public and this information was, you know, widely spread, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security. Yeah, no worries, guys. We have to do it. We're trying to help you, you know? Help us help you by showing us your text messages. But many people, like you're probably thinking right now, thought that the spying was unnecessary and it was an invasion of their privacy. I have to agree. Number three, more documents. I mentioned earlier those offshore accounts for those higher ups, you know, those big bad boys. Well, a year later, after that 2016 scandal, even more documents were exposed. All the docs, all around the clock. Docs around the clock. Didn't even script that, that's how good I am. Docs around the clock, we can franchise that. Meaning, even more secrets. Even more names. Spill the tea, who is it this time? Well, amongst the 13 million documents, we saw Nike and Apple. Yeah, they're shady, who knew? They had around $250 billion hidden in offshore accounts. On top of that, they were financial connections to the literal Queen of England and Justin Trudeau. Yeah, our, our Canadian lad. We got mad at him a lot for going to his cottage the last few years. Meanwhile, we forgot he's in some offshore accounts. There you go, some more juice to get mad at him about. Number two, Project Dishfire. This one sounds calming, Project Dishfire. Sounds like the best detergent you can get. It was reported by The Guardian that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. Yeah, this is, I'm just exposing all of your secret texts for this one, I was really coming for it. I bet half of these texts literally just say, you up? The government's like, damn it, we'll try again tomorrow. They would then use these messages to pull the details of its user. You know, location, time, contact information, and credit card details. Stuff you don't want out there to anybody. Especially people wearing dress shirts. Ugh, the worst. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of that data, just without the actual context of the text messages. Which is, that's comforting. Basically, they have all this data and at any point they could extract anything they wanted, like older purchases, past travel plans, past financial transactions, all your contacts, regardless of whether or not you're being investigated for anything at all, just because they feel like it. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and quite shady, and it really was. All this happened right before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in response to the Snowden leak, so the timing couldn't be more crucial. And finally, number one, VX gas. The government using gas to take out targets. What is this, Mission Impossible? This is scary, I won't be able to sleep after this. What am I writing? VX gas is tasteless and it's odorless. It can take you out just by skin contact alone. The nerve agent VX is of course extremely illegal as well, obviously. It came from ICIS research from the early 50s when developing new insecticides. And it worked, a little too well I'd say, and it was swiftly and thankfully outlawed. But the bell can't be unrung now, can it be? This was the same nerve gas that was used to take out Kim Jong Nam back in 2017. That was a, a new revelation we discovered. We're like, oh, it was this gas. That's terrifying. Yeah, he was attacked at an airport. Two people rubbed a cloth on his face, that's all it took. It was covered in VX and then he died on the way to the hospital. He had a seizure. How scary is that? Initially, officials thought cyanide was used here, but in reality, it was only 10 milligrams of VX. So far, that's the only confirmed case of VX being used to take somebody out. Again, the only one we know so far, so 
sleep in fear. That's all I'm saying. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear secrets. Today's technology, it's getting faster. It's getting better. It's getting harder. It's getting stronger, right? All the good stuff. I'm learning more from Wordle than I did in high school, okay? But how secure are these study apps? That's the million dollar question. A year ago, we quickly saw how a flashcard app could expose nuclear secrets. Yeah, this is a, this is a big one. Nuclear bases around Europe are housing US troops. And while they're there studying, they're using online flashcard apps to remember complex security codes. Makes a lot of sense. They would use common sites such as Quizlet, Cram, Chegg Prep, etc. There's one set of 70 cards, again, holding top secret information titled Study with an exclamation mark. Study! There we go. Each card contained information regarding live and non-live nuclear weapons. Guys like six times six, 36. Okay, eight times eight, 64. And uh, that's a nuclear warhead. Okay, I don't know what this flash card is. That's, uh, that's a nuke. Number nine, Guantanamo Files. Back in April 2011, a pretty heavy leak hit the web. And no, it wasn't Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man 3, it wasn't any of that. And no, it wasn't Avengers 1. WikiLeaks, who I covered in part one of the series, they also released the Guantanamo Files, and they exposed the way prisoners were treated in Guantanamo Bay. In total, there were 779 documents that got released, and in said documents, it was discovered that innocent civilians, both from Pakistan and Afghanistan, were both being held there without any charges. It's brutal, there's some shady stuff going on. The age ranges as well for these prisoners go on from very young adults to an 89-year-old, so again, many of these these prisoners are being held without any charges and they're really young and really old, being treated like crap. This is a heavy leak and in these documents we also see the way these prisoners are treated in detail. The way information was extracted from them was, it was horrible, it was straight up torture. Number eight, off-road vehicles. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We're living in a pretty amazing time, I guess, when it comes to space exploration and travel and stuff. We recently sent off the James Webb Space Telescope to see even more of our universe. We're getting bigger and better, we're going deeper. 2020 was also the year where UFOs were just on the news. But what happens when these two worlds collide? Figuratively speaking, of course. Just over a year ago, an astrophysicist by the name of Eric Davis, he gave his classified briefing to the Defense Department mentioning these off-world vehicles. Secret off-world vehicles. What could he possibly mean by that? I mean, I mean the ISS, that is technically an off-world vehicle. Spaceships aren't new, you know what I mean? Well, he added the fact that these off-world vehicles were being made somewhere else as well. Not just, you know, on Earth. Like some space BMW? I don't know. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid is quoted in a Times article saying he believes that crashes of objects of unknown origin may have occurred and that any recovered materials should be studied. Okay, more than fair. Eric Davis also once produced this report to try and convince the government to invest in time travel and use wormholes to achieve such a task. Yeah, this is the Christopher Nolan segment of the list. This guy knows some stuff, for sure. He actually said he studied these crashed materials and his conclusion is that there's no way humans could have ever created it. Yeah, I don't know, alien materials? What do you guys think? Do we, are we hiding alien tech? I think so. Number seven, weaponized lightning. This whole time I thought Thor worked for the Avengers. Apparently he is working for the CIA. How fun is that? Nice. Back in the late 60s, the scientist, who remains anonymous to this day, always a good sign, well, they figured out how to weaponize and bottle lightning. Can't imagine what Thor. They were determined to weaponize lightning to create Thor, I guess. That way, there was little to no evidence left over after a planned attack. The idea, as crazy as it sounds, is pretty genius. Once it got online, people read it, and they're like, oh, it's actually, this is a good idea. It never made it to its final stages, thankfully, but when Forbes was allowed to release these declassified CIA files, we got a better idea of what was going on in the sky at the time. The plan was to draw these extremely thin metal wires from airplanes or rockets, whatever the case, something flying high in the sky. They would drop a metal fishing line through the clouds and then send many volts of electricity down to an enemy camp or whatever. That would for sure mess up their communications if it had worked. If, again, leaked ideas that never came to fruition. Number six, spinning cube. Remember when UFO footage was being leaked in 2020? We had Senate hearings and we just didn't care. So many of these UFO documents ended up online from the 2020, you know, alien leak, whatever that was. That was crazy. Some are too strange not to mention, evidently. Especially in a list of government secrets. Well, of course, we're going to talk about some aliens. One of these leaked videos, I can't lie, there's, there's some odd behavior going on here. In this video, we see a spinning alien cube almost. Yeah, it was spotted over Missouri and then only a couple hours later, it was seen again, but this time 700 miles away. So whatever it was, it's moving quite fast. 44-year-old Matthew Jandeka was minding his own business, hanging out on the porch when this caught his attention. It was a sunny day and the light reflecting off the cube caught his eye. But a day earlier, another Another dude, 30 year old Justin Johnson, saw the exact same thing. He saw it driving home. He saw the light and the reflections also caught his eye in the sky. At first, he thought maybe it was a balloon, but the movements were too odd, you know? Maybe it's another drone project. Uh, what do we think? Is there cube cube aliens now? Some geometric aliens coming down? Someone call Shia LaBeouf. We have more cubes. We have space cubes. Number five 
always listening. I mentioned earlier in part one that summit where the United States originally wanted to call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden ended up leaking a PowerPoint training slideshow, and now the tables were all of a sudden turned. Snowden ended up revealing himself as the spy kid on June 12th, and he said that he planned on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since way back in 2009. More specifically, Snowden said the NSA hacked the Chinese University of Hong Kong, aka the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. That's pretty eye-opening. It's a lot of stuff. You're seeing a lot of seeing a lot of secrets in there. But there's many who see this hack as a good thing, of course. Citizens want to know what their governments are up to. I personally would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. You know what I mean? So a poll was conducted on June 10th. Turns out 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. Yeah, 57% were not a fan of the NSA's actions, while 37% were on board. Number four, friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States aren't safe here. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. Yeah, the NSA tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of guys this time around. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA right after finding out and said that this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Yeah, she said friends, that's crazy. It's like when you show your buddy a photo on your phone and then they start swiping. You're like, hi, what are you doing? Betrayal, what are you doing? Now, as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader, I don't care. What's the big deal here? What can going through my phone really do? Well, it was also reported that they were monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. Yeah, just listening in, seeing, seeing what your aunt's up to. They monitored around 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, I'd be a little concerned. They're listening to your secret recipes. I hope no one's listening to my phone calls. I mean, who makes phone calls anymore, you know? I see a phone call come in and I'm like, eh. If it's important, they'll leave a message. That's what I say. Even the NSA. Leave a message. Number three, bird drones. Bird drones is not a new concept by any means, but it's fun. It's so fun, we gotta talk about it whenever we can. Back in the early 60s, the CIA had this secret program called Project Aqualine, where they used small drones with a low radar cross section, a little camera almost, all that nice spy gadget stuff. They began working on this back in 1965, believe it or not, and the first prototype was it was a bit obvious, it was big. It weighed over 100 pounds. It was this massive eagle looking camera, but the only way to catch it was to fly it into a net, which broke something almost every single test flight. So cut to 2022, yeah, there's probably a drone pigeon out there somewhere watching you. Olivia just did a couple lists on hidden cameras. So birds, drones, I mean, probably. Some people think pigeons aren't even real. Some people think pigeons are drones sent by the government to watch us. I don't know, I think pigeons are pigeons. They look like pigeons. They found a hidden camera in a cactus, so sleep in fear, people. Number two, Two, backup files. When Glenn Greenwald kicked off this whole thing in 2013 with Snowden, it was his massive security breach, of course. Snowden was, of course, in immensely hot water, but he was also ahead of the game right from the start, before even getting caught, before even coming out. Snowden had told Greenwald that if anything crazy were to happen to him in the future, well, he'll just leak even more information. Nice, we love backup files. You got dirt? Well, I got more dirt. Everyone's dirty. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, then it was set up to automatically send and send private documents to higher ups and keep it going. AKA the people directly involved would still stay out of the picture. On top of that, Snowden reminded the Guardian that he has many more secrets to spill. Specifically, the NSA surveillance systems. Yeah, this is why you make backups, people. Duly noted, Snowden. I put this backup script in another Google Doc, just in case the NSA comes around. And finally, number one, Pine Gap. Going to the land down under for this one. Sorry, I said under. Should have said under, but I like it. Australia's fun. Pine Gap is a secret military compound built around the Cold War. It's been described as Australia's Area 51. Australia's Area 51? Area 51? I don't know. I, I love Australian accents, but I can't do them. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I don't like spiders either. All we know, the secret base, this mysterious island, was revealed back in 2013 thanks to, you guessed it, Edward Snowden. This guy releases everything. We need another Snowden to come around. This guy's the OG. Turns out this island is not a resort. In fact, it's actually a satellite surveillance base that runs espionage operations. The NSA uses this facility for global interception and they also collect internet and telephone communication records. Again, all those secret recipes that you're telling to your aunt. They're listening. They're taking it. They're like, oh, extra garlic, you bet. If that makes sense. Back in the 70s, around 400 American families just happened to move to the nearby Alice Springs. Yeah, not a coincidence at all. Just that many families rolling in. Yeah, no government operations. Just, you know, people just decided to move here. What does your husband do? Oh, he surfs the web waves. He surfs the waves. The waves, just the waves. Just that's it. Nothing to do with the web or online. 
Pine Gap, bring your kids and bathing suit. Have fun. Kicking off the list at number 10, nuclear site list. Here on Most Amazing, we love lists. I'm not sure if you can tell, but apparently the US government also fancies a list or two. Back when Obama was still running the show, a report was delivered to Congress. Well, it was supposed to be. The 266 page report featured every nook and cranny about the US nuclear program, and it was released publicly on the government printing office's website in draft form by accident. Yeah, just a casual PDF that shows us literal maps to stockpiled fuel used for nuclear warheads back in the day. We love those. The only PDFs I actually enjoy are those ones, actually. Does this stuff happen often? How does this happen? I thought this type of stuff could never happen, right? Well, MIT professor John M. Dutch said these screw-ups do happen, and it doesn't look like a serious breach. I mean, it certainly sounds serious, but okay, we'll trust the government. Thank you, sir. Let's do it. Number nine, climate gate. Yeah, we had a smooth one off the bat, now we're getting right into the serious stuff. Climate stuff. <laughs> Climate change and stuff. A little different sounding than Watergate, but we'll get to that one later on, obviously. Climate gate, this was back in 2009 when some hackers some hackers released thousands of emails and files all from the climate research unit in the UK. These documents, okay, hold on to your butts for this one, they show scientists suppressing the publication of research going against global warming. So this sparked a bunch of bad ideas because at that point in 2009, we just believed it. We just stopped listening at all. Climate change critics were like, aha, I knew it. It was all a conspiracy this whole time. The CRU responded and said the emails were out of context and that the planet is indeed heating up. And we're still in fact burning towards our demise, but these docs leaked literally weeks before the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Denmark, so peculiar timing, I'd say. Science fired back pretty quick. Scientists all around the world were actively proving at that point that humans actively are causing global warming. Today we're uh, scrambling a bit more to figure this one out than 2009. Yeah. A few more of you believe this time around. Number eight, God Save the Queen. This one's quite grim, but I have to talk about it. Have you ever wondered what happens, what will happen after the Queen passes away? I mean, I know it's the last thing we want to think about right now because uh, dark, obviously, but it's hard not to think of, especially when Politico magazine releases Operation London Bridge to the public. Yeah, what is that? This magazine somehow got documents showing each and every step in detail what'll happen when that fateful day arrives. There'll be phone calls to the Prime Minister, of course, would be first. Customs require that the Prime Minister is informed by the monarch's private security. Flags will fly at half-mast, of course, but oddly enough, in this document, the Queen's death is referred to as D-Day. Yeah, nine days of protocols will follow afterwards and after a service at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, that's when Queen Elizabeth will be buried with King George VI. It's dark, but I mean, imagine reading about this one morning in 2021. What an odd article. What a, what a brutal way to wake up. Number seven, secret PowerPoint. Yeah, nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but I'll do my best. Here we go. When it comes to the NSA, odds are this PowerPoint is going to be pretty juicy, right? This slideshow was often used to train US intelligence, and I got to say, 41 pages? That's it. I did 45 on Medieval Knights and High school. That's all I'm saying. Step your game up. This program was called PRISM. You probably heard about this. This is a big deal. And it cost about $20 million a year. This was the highlight of the Snowden leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. See, originally they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple come 2012, that's when things got a little dicey as most things are with Apple. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants. Google, Skype, YouTube even, so I don't know, search history, you may wanna delete that stuff. There was a summit in California, which originally was tense. The United States was accusing China of cyber attack, but right after Edward Snowden leaked the prism tea, they didn't have much power at said summit. So China and Europe citizens were obviously not too pleased here. Yeah, leaked data, we don't, we don't like hearing about that. There's a, this one gets a little worse. Number six. Big Brother is watching. Even allies of the United States are not safe here, okay? Thanks to Snowden, our boy again, gotta mention him a couple times in this list. At the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. It's a lot of people, it's a lot of eyes, a lot of spies. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, not just a couple of dudes. They were spying on 35 world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Ah, oh, brutal. She said the F word too. She's like, hey, we were friends, pal. Don't go through my phone. Don't swipe left in the photos, okay? Betrayal. Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone, like regular phone calls in Spain for the average folks. So if you thought you were off the hook, you're not, literally and figuratively. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. 
you know, save some tea for in person. You don't want to give up all that good stuff on the phone. Number five, leaked voters. Back in December 2015, personal information from 191 million voters was leaked to the public online. Yeah, this feels like yesterday. I remember this all unfolding. I was like, what? How? Researcher Chris Vickery found this data while conducting a security investigation. See, Forbes had described Vickery as, dare I say, a good hacker. They're what's referred to as these white hat hackers. They find weak spots in security without sabotaging or exploding them, you know? Unlike Snowden or other people. That's the key, that's the Donnie difference. 79% of those eligible to vote were the victims here, so it was a big one. All their names, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, emails, you name it, things you don't want other people knowing, let alone third parties, were all out there. If you could vote, you were exposed. We're still unsure who was behind this entire leak. CSO Online and databreaches.net suggest that the information more than likely came from software provider Nation Builder. But CEO Jim Gillum announced that that was not the case and they did not create the database. Although he conceded that it is possible that some of the information that it contains may have come from the data we make available for free to campaigns. He's like, no, we didn't do it, but maybe we did. <laughs> it's like, okay. So a third party took what they could and really ran with it. That's terrifying. Time to change your email again. Number four, psychoelectronic weapons. Yeah, this sounds like something Iron Man uses. It doesn't sound too chill now, does it? Psychoelectronic weapons. The first time Curtis Waltman heard of these uh, was by accident, as you could have guessed. He was receiving documents via Yahoo and they were not what he expected. See, originally he had filed a Freedom of Information Act request to Washington State Fusion Center. See, he was trying to find out more on the clashes between Antifa and the far right, but he got a response and it was all about experimental weapons. Guy gets a zip file back in return called EM effects on human body. He's like, Big Shiny Tune 6? He's like, what? I didn't ask for this. Way too many viruses in that one. Big, Big Shiny Tune 7, I think, was a good one. That's a good one. In this document, he saw diagrams on these weapons and the effects that they have on people. There's muscle quaking, all body pain. One of the effects allowed users to control their dreams. Is this a weapon? This is, this is pretty remarkable. This was clearly sent by mistake. Ah, the only emails I get are student loans, and those ones are not by mistake. Those ones are definitely on purpose. They're like, Mr. Taylor. I'm like, oh, oh God, they found me. Number three, quantum computer. Uh, this next one's pretty eye-opening. Here we go. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are also getting way too good. I've fallen for way too many fake trailers. I thought they were doing a Back to the Future reboot with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. for like four days. All fake. Whole thing's fake. But thanks to our man Snowden, the OG secret revealer, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. Yeah, how fun What's that one be? I wonder if it can run Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 without getting hot. No computer can do that. It's called the Quantum Computer, and it costs about 80 million to create this program. This computer is safely stored in a massive room sized metal box, not intimidating at all. It's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anything finance records, medical, your old MSN, hopefully, maybe, probably, definitely not. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This Quantum Computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes years. This supercomputer they're working on can break through a lot faster. We can get through in days, even hours. So you better clear that search history now while you still can. Thanks for the hot tip, Snowden. I was going to switch to PC gaming, but you know what? I'll wait it out. I'll wait till this new one comes out. It looks a little faster. Number two, WikiLeaks Warlogs. Companies have to be somewhere, right? We're in a film studio in Toronto. We go to a certain place. We leave said certain place in a said certain area. Right? Where do places like WikiLeaks live? How do they stay secure? Well, in Stockholm, apparently, buried under 100 feet below street level in an old nuclear bunker. That's where right next to Pirate Bay. They're neighbors, actually. They knock on the cement walls. Today, it's a facility owned by Swedish internet provider Banoff. Now, this is where they keep servers for WikiLeaks, but Julian Assange, front runner of this whole operation, his hard drive is in this bunker behind a two-foot steel door accompanied by numerous backup generators, so he's secure. In October 2010, WikiLeaks actually published Army Field reports from 2004 to 2009. Now, it's one of the biggest leaks in US history. This report confirmed that there were over 66,000 civilian deaths in the Iraq war out of the 109,000 confirmed in total. That's horrible. This leak also suggested that some American troops were classifying civilians as enemies in their statistics afterwards. These numbers were from 2004 to 2009. One of the biggest leaks in US history, no doubt about it. And finally, number one, Watergate. Yeah, it's not an internet leak, but it's too good to talk about. This is OG, come on. We have to finish on Watergate. In the middle of 1972, there were five men who were all arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, DC. Now, it was pretty obvious they intended on bugging the place. They looked like spy kids. They had all the gears. They were, you know, it was 
fishy. As the year went on, the election came closer and closer, and then all of a sudden, out of the woodwork comes this anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post reporters that apparently the Watergate bugging incident was a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage kicked off by none other than President Nixon himself. Yeah, he was trying to get that re-election. Now, despite this information leak and it being reported in the news and all that good stuff, Nixon was still re-elected, even though he was involved in this entire scandal. These men were clearly linked to a fundraising group for Nixon, but his administration just kept denying any involvement. It wasn't until a year later, in 1972, when reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, they also came forward and exposed more stuff. Yeah, they exposed the administration's role in this entire scandal, and they had an inside source, an FBI agent named Mark Feltz, and this ultimately led to Nixon resigning later in 1974, the first president to do so. Mm -hmm.